As an English language minority institution, we should be involved in developing civic leadership in our young people. So through continued conversations with Dean Berger and her tenacity and conviction, we were able to secure support from the Quebec government to develop an idea. So the idea was to hold a bishop's forum. It's a week-long institute on civic engagement for English-speaking youth between the ages of 18 to 24. It's to be held in August, just the week before CEGEP started, before they went back, so about mid-August. The participants were housed in residence on the campus, traveled to and from bishops from their residence, from their homes, um, and accommodation were covered, and the program included cultural activities. So we held the first Bishops Forum in 2017. Provide you with a bit more context. One of the most important challenges facing Quebec English-speaking community is its capacity to retain its young people. And as for all Quebecers, the econo economic health and social dynamism of Quebec society are critical de determinants in whether young English-speaking adults choose to make their lives here. But there are also additional factors which impact young English-speaking Quebecers and their decision to remain in Quebec. Three of the most important are their ability to speak French, their employment opportunities, and their sense of engagement in and capacity to contribute to Quebec society. The goal of the Bishops Forum is to contribute to the third element by enhancing young English-speaking Quebecers' understanding of how some of the fundamental institutions of Quebec society function. The program will give young participants insight into how some major Quebec institutions operate, such as the National Assembly, political parties, community and not-for-profit organizations, and the media. We figured that if young English-speaking Quebecers could wrap their imaginations around the business of Quebec's major institutions and how they're transacted, they'd be better equipped to lead the change from within. It's also vital that, and important that there be a place for young English-speaking Quebecers from all regions of Quebec who could meet, understand that they have similar experiences, and how they could continue to build this community vitality. And lastly, supporting youth in sustaining civic leadership is imperative. So we received funding and support from the government of Quebec um, as part of its Stratégie d'Action Jeunesse 2016-2021 for at least three years. It was an ambitious project. So we needed to um, bring on board key members of the English inst institutions. So we uh, invited and were pleased that the, most of the directors general of the English speaking CEGEPs from across, the pro uh, from across Quebec came on board. Um, members of the senior administration and the two other English universities some community organizations, and some students, and our young people rather than students. We had, um, as well, a steering committee. And we were extremely fortunate, I have to say, to have Sylvia Martin Laforge from QCGN and Rita Legault, Director of Communications, working with us and offering their expertise and community involvement. So the advisory board assisted us in defining the various themes and topics to be addressed through the week, and more importantly, provided invaluable support in promoting this opportunity to their students and to their members. So how did we go about it? We had posters on all of the campuses, uh, the CEGEP and universities. We sent out e-posters to targeted groups. We were on Facebook on Twitter um, and Instagram. <laughs> um, but I think one of the most effective ways that we found um, to promote it to young people across Quebec 
was actually through mentors reaching out to the potential participants themselves and saying, this is a great opportunity. I think you should, sh you should be there. And in the second year, what we found even more helpful, that was the first year where we, it was only experienced people or adults who were actually um, introducing the idea of participating in the forum to young people. By the second year, we were lucky. We had 50 odd young people who participated in the first forum and it was their influence. They had far more credibility than we did about a, 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 um, a next group of participants coming in. Because it was fully funded, we thought that we would have to have an application process. So for the first year, we wanted between 45 and 55 young people. Um, and applications were vetted by the director and myself. In the first year, the director of the, uh, the forum was Jim Hughes, who's now with the McConnell Foundation. And this past year, um, we worked with Russell Copeman, who's now the new executive director of the English Quebec School Boards Association. He was the director. We didn't accept all applications. Um, some didn't meet the age requirement and others didn't fulfill the requirements. So part of the application process was that they were to answer three questions. Tell us about yourself, explain why you should be picked to attend the Bishop's Forum, and the third question, what kind of change would you like to see in Quebec si society? They also had to download their CV and include a, a letter of reference from a mentor. It could either be a letter specific for this forum or a reference letter that they had on hand. So in 2017, um, we had 51 participants, from mostly from the CEGEPs, universities, and two participants who were um, in, the, in the workforce. Um, and I just in include this to show that we had good representation from the English institution in 2017. In 2018, you'll note that I guess with the 2017 formers getting the word out to their friends who were studying in um, the French speaking institutions, we had representation from students from other um, institutions as well. Um, one of the other uh, feedback we got from the 2017 forum is that we wanted a bit more uh, uh, people from the working group as well. We needed to hear from them. Um, and as well, we needed to hear from um, maybe our in indigenous populations as well. So through our relationship with Maggie McDonough, um, an award-winning teacher in Nunavik, three young people from Nunavik joined us this year. And I can tell you that we were all impacted by their presence. And I think they also came away with a sense that more people were aware of the conditions they're living in. Um, Nil Nigel Adams, one of the formers, um, met, many mem met many members of the media and has been speaking out um, about uh, situations that are happening in Nunavik now. So we didn't do demo demographics by region for the 2017, but just to show you the demographics, just for interest sake of the um, 2018 participants, 35 from Montreal still, we know that there's a, a large, massive population in, in the Montreal area. Um, and 2019, obviously, we're going to make sure that we, we grow uh, the numbers in the other, the other regions. So what was this Bishop's Forum? So it's a week-long institute with plenary sessions. Um, participants arrived on the Sunday for an initial meet and greet with their workshop, with their working groups, and an opening dinner. And then on Monday, began an incredibly rich experience of hearing from and exchanging with guest speakers in plenary sessions, breaking off into small groups of five participants to develop a position paper on a legislative change on a specific topic. And that presentation would be presented in front of a mock parliamentary commission on the Friday, the final day. 
There were also some scheduled cultural activities on selected evening, so it was nonstop. Um, I know it sounds ambitious, but we found that in spite of having to get up early, even in August, um, and not having a lot of free time, we felt that everyone came away with um, a sense of, of accomplishment. And uh, you'll hear from other people who <laughs> hopefully will back me up. <laughs> so let me take you through the week. So the plenary sessions, um, and throughout the four days, we convened in plenary sessions to hear from individuals who could provide context, history, and their experiences of working in Quebec's major institutions. As you can see, we were able to bring in individual speakers and panels of speakers who not only gave their perspectives, but the participants were able to engage with them in dialogue after the formal presentations were delivered. Jean Charest was one of the first day's guest speakers to help us set the stage for the bottom, for the rest of the week. You can see that the bottom slide um, shows this year's arts and culture panel, which included Nantalie Ndongo from CBC, Amy McDonald, a songwriter and program manager um, at the English Language Arts Network, and Ashley Weyburn, founder of Mentorly. And we also held an all-party panel election right before the election was called, which gave the young participants um, an opportunity to voice their concerns and send their messages to each of the political parties. As I mentioned, our plenary speakers were all leaders in major institutions in Quebec and outside of Quebec. And we felt very lucky and honored to have them accept to join us in the middle of the summer. So just to name a few, again, I mentioned Jean Charest. We also had Eric Maldoff, a founding member of the Quebec Alliance and QCGN board member, um, who provided a brief history of the English-speaking community. Heidi Rathjen and Tiffany Callender, leaders of community organizations, spoke on how to effect social change and how to get involved in your community. And Alain Dupuis provided the perspective of the Francophone community outside Quebec and how they are ensuring the vitality of that community. The participants also had the opportunity to have some informal chat with the speakers. So the speakers were invited to either arrive before um, their session, if it was in the uh, afternoon, or stay for lunch after, if their sessions were in the morning. So they had... Um, had an opportunity to actually meet the participants um, and the participants were able to ask them questions about their specific presentations they were working on. So these were opportunities for them um, to actually talk to them about, already talking to them about their presentations that they would be giving in front of the Parliamentary Commission on, on the Friday. We had cultural activities. I told you it's jam-packed. <laughs> um, so... The first year, we had Kevin Tierney, who showed his film, French Immersion, and then spent some time talking about the experience and fielding questions. Um, we took him to Foresta Lumina, it's a 2.6 kilometer multimedia walk in the Enchanted Forest. I say, if you haven't been there yet, I really recommend it. It's the Coatica Gorge Park, which includes the longest suspended footbridge in North America. It's worth the drive, I think. And this year, we had a pop opera of Starmania songs which was on the program. So, <laughs> the <laughs> so the working groups. So all the participants, the, were the, at, when they were applicants, they answered those three questions on the application form. Number three was what kind of change would you like to see in Quebec society? From their answers, we fleshed out five different categories, five different themes. In 2017, you'll notice, um, and then there were different ones in 2018. Those themes were then sent back to the participant and say, which group would you like to, to work in? And so they had to rank them from one to five. The first five were in the group, and then we went to their second, third choice. So um, you can see that some of the preoccupations, that sort of same preoccupation, preoccupation surfaced in both years, but then um, there were others like youth engagement and education that came out in the second year that were um, focused on. 
So throughout the week, there was dedicated time set aside for the working groups to meet, to develop their presentation, and to assign speaking roles. Okay, I'm okay. So with those working groups, we added um, coaches. Coaches who were teamed up with each of the working groups um, to assist the groups. Now on the left hand side, you'll see that the responsibilities for the coaches. They're not to guide them. They were much more just as to be there as mentor, as to counsel, but not to lead. It was really um, participant driven presentations and it was mainly just to maybe um, frame the presentation a bit. In 2017, we had adult um, coaches. In 2018, we actually um, added in formers from 2017 who became co-coaches. So that added another element um, to the 2018 participant um, event. And I'm gonna let Nicholas and Chris and Heather speak to their perspectives. So on the Friday, uh, each group was scheduled to present their paper in front of a parliamentary commission. Uh, commissioners were either elected officials or leaders of organizations having themselves presented in front of a commission. Just gonna give you a sample of some of the, the topics of the presentations for the Friday that the participants had worked on throughout the week. So they were some was providing mif midwifery services to more ex expectant mothers, providing universal pharmaceutical care to Quebecers, be the change <laughs> uh, to protect our bees, advancing Inuit youth rights in Northern Quebec, and in the first year, there was a parliamentary commission paper on providing free hygiene products and washrooms of public institutions, and. I think I've read somewhere, and I think there are some, or some institutions that are offering this. So did it come from here? I don't know, but that's the word spread, and so <laughs> I think it was uh, important. So Dr. Heather Lawford, who's with us, who's the CRC Chair in Youth Engagement, was critical in ensuring that the young participants were able to express their views in a variety of different ways. So not everyone wants to get up in front of a mic and ask a group of people questions. And so they would prefer expressing themselves through the wit written word. <coughs> I'm sorry the visuals are not as easy to read, but I think the participants were very much appreciative of these opportunities to engage and express their feelings and ideas throughout the week. So I'd just like to finish off by telling you, um, I think two post-Bishop's Forum effects um, Malcolm Lewis Richard, who was Richmond, sorry, <laughs> and Haley Campbell, who were formers in 2017. Um, I think this, it was part of uh, that this experience gave them additional tools to spearhead youth for Youth Quebec. Malcolm is the current president and Haley is a board member. And Youth for Youth work in collaboration with community organizations to connect, promote, and mobilize English-speaking youth so that they are aware of supports available to them to help them reach their full potential and remain in Quebec. And lastly, these are the photos of our three uh, participants from Nunavik this year. Nigel Adams from Kanjirsujuak, Martha Angutinguak from Alpaluk, and Sevam Ilgan from Kwaktak. Their participation and contribution to the forum this year was felt on so many levels, I think. It was eye-opening and heart-wrenching experience for, I think, everyone who participated in this year's forum. Um, we felt their joy and pride in their people, as well as their desperation for their plight. I believe that Nigel, Martha, and Sevam also left feeling that they were less alone and that there were at least 50 more people from the South who could advocate for them. Um, so it may be too early to know how, but it's not too early to say with some great confidence that the Bishop's Forum will have great impact not only on what 
the young people learn, but on the colleagues they meet. Um, our thesis is that if they will want to stay because they realize that they are part of a vital community and they can influence change and impact their society. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say thanks for coming to listen to what we have to say. Um, it's my pleasure to speak about this and my pleasure to be invited to participate in the forum. So it's something that I wanted to do the first year, but I wasn't able to. So I was really happy this year to get the chance. Um, so that was a perfect segue, what you said exactly. Um, so that was my exact experience. Um, before I get into it, I just want to give a bit of background about me so you maybe understand where my opinions are coming from. So like Miles said, I'm not from Quebec. Um, I'm from southwestern Ontario, and I went to French immersion in school. So I grew up speaking French, which helped me integrate into Quebec. But I came in with not the same idea of what an Anglophone is. I didn't grow up with any of the politicized understandings of Anglophones. I don't have any baggage, if you will, or I don't have any, I'm sort of a fresh face in Quebec, and I have, I think, somewhat of a neutral perspective, which has really helped me, I think, um, especially in my master's research as well. I think taking on this topic, not being from the province, has been really useful. Um, so starting to identify as an Anglophone in Quebec has been a bit strange for me. I'm still wrapping my head around it, but it looks like I'm probably staying, so I guess I should <laughs> start thinking about that. <laughs> so uh, seven years later, I'm still here. Um, and have no plans to leave as of yet. Um, so I just have a really like tiny PowerPoint just to guide my points. Um, so like Denise mentioned, we got a really good historical background too. So even though I study about Quebec, there's so many things I learned at the forum that I wouldn't have learned otherwise. So just getting that foundation to move forward was really useful to me. And as well, the organization of the government and advocacy structures, like you mentioned, um, it's not something that I had learned beforehand. So in order to participate in this world, we needed really just to learn how it works. So I walked out feeling much more confident that what I'm doing in this field is something I can do, and I feel more informed to do it. Um, and it was also really good to learn about what opportunities there are for me as a youth going into this field. So again, I walked out a lot more confident than I did coming in. And I am in this field too, so I feel like that's saying a lot, that this forum brought so much knowledge to me, even though technically I'm already studying a lot of this. Okay, um, so this is a big question, and it was sort of the point of the forum, I guess. But the civic engagement, or the ideas around it that I got from the forum were really valuable to me. So the first one, just the notion of citizenship. Um, so we had a couple really good lectures about what it means to be a citizen, what our role is in society, how do we act on this role. Um, and I think it was really important to get that philosophical background of actually thinking about what it means to be a citizen. So it's something I think we all forget to do sometimes, is we go about our daily lives or we do what we do, but we don't actually think of from the point of view of what our obligation is, or if you do even think you have an obligation. So we had first a philosophical background, and then we also had a few people come in and talk about what they actually do as engaged citizens. So that was really valuable. So for example, we had someone um, speak from the McConnell Foundation. Some of you may have heard her before, but her name is Neve. And for me, she was a great role model. She's a young woman in sort of my field who's done a lot with her life so far and has made a huge difference. And so that was really great for me to hear from her. And many of the things that she's doing, I didn't know were going on. So it was just great to see that there's someone, sort of yeah, a role model for me to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, there's just this uh, notion of making a difference. I think, uh, like you said as well, like growing up in school, it's all about me first and accomplishing what I need to do for myself. But what was really great is that I think we're at the point now where we need to think beyond that. And I don't actually know if I was ready for that until this point. Like I feel like now after my university education, I'm really at the point where I actually want to make a difference or I feel I have the tools to do it. So I think this forum is really good for making me realize that and also showing that it's actually not so hard, that it's something that's actually attainable to do. Uh, okay, so these are some of just my like informal reflections, I guess, on what I think about youth and the future vitality of the English-speaking population. So for me, I come from an education background, so I think for me that's one of the most important things is like we need the youth to have the knowledge before they can do anything. So I think education in schools is really important. Um, 
I think, teaching of like Quebec government language laws. Um, that's my focus, is Bill 101. That's what I'm doing for my master's research. So I think learning about that in school, ideally from sort of a neutral perspective, would be ideal. But that's difficult in Quebec, I know. Um, and again, I didn't grow up here, so I can't really speak as much to that, but from what I'm learning. Um, and also, again, this is problematic too, but the Anglophone representation in history population, or in history classes, like that's really important as well, and that's been challenging the last couple of years. And vice versa too, knowledge about the French population in English classrooms. I think it's all really important to get an overview because very few people have the whole picture. They have one slice of it and often an emotional or colored side to it. So I think if you're starting off that way, that's already going to be really difficult. Um, something I wanted to say for education is civic education, I think is so important. And it's something in Ontario I had. And again, I'm not too sure what is included in the Quebec curriculum, but if it's not, it should be there more. And all the way through, I think, primary, secondary, and university. Um, this is not the forum, but on election day, I had the privilege of working at one of the voting stations. And they had the new child voting station polls. I don't know if people saw. But it was a fabulous experience. I worked there all day long, and I got to help children vote for the first time. And so I was explaining to six and seven year olds what it means to vote, or what it means to be a citizen. And like they had never seen the word vote before, some of them. So it was a big task for me. And I was doing it in French a lot of the time too, so <laughs> doubly hard for me to explain citizenship to a five year old. <laughs> um, yeah, the parents sort of just passed their kids off to me. And they're <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So for me, that was a good example of an initiative that like should be encouraged. And I think they were in schools as well this year. They weren't just at the polling station. So for me, that was fantastic. And I think if you get them young and make it habitual and just something that's part of their, their daily life, then it, hopefully by the time they get to engage citizen age that they're, they're ready for. Um, OK, so yeah, support and resources. I guess just making it known to Anglophones like what kind of support and resources they have. And so I think we're at a really good time for Anglophones my age right now is that there are actually lots of new funding opportunities and new uh, initiatives that are starting. So suddenly there are, or there is a wide variety of resources available. So I feel lucky to be maybe in that generation. And that's sort of the same with empowerment encouragement. Um, I think Anglophones, from what I understand, find it difficult that they aren't maybe represented as much or they feel themselves to be sort of the token Anglophone in society and I think they just need the constant encouragement that they are part of Quebec society and they do have something to offer. So again, that's something that I still don't quite relate to, I think, as an Anglophone from outer province. I don't feel any of, or as much of that, but I understand where it's coming from. And so I think it's important to keep encouraging youth and the funding that we're getting now, I think is helping, but just on all different levels. And the last point, which I'll talk about more in my next slide is just, the different faces of Quebec now or what the Anglophone population looks like. So it's changed a lot like in the last couple of generations. Um, so I think it was one fourth of teenagers or age zero to 17 identify as a visible minority, for example, in the Anglophone population. So that's really high. Um, so I think we need to be careful that when we're doing these things, we're taking into consideration that the generation of Anglophones is not the same as it was 20, 30, 10, 15 years ago. Um, so I think that changes a lot the perspective that we have. So I think it's important to recognize that. Or even just people like me who are coming into Quebec, I don't fit in a necessary normal box of what a Quebec Anglophone is. So yeah, so this is more about youth in Quebec today. So I've worked at CEGEPs, at a French CEGEP. Um, and for me, that was a really eye-opening experience. I got to speak with Francophone age 17 to 30 approximately. And just their understanding of language is very different than I think the generation of the past. And so I think we need to really speak to the youth and what they think about things is really important right now. Because in government, a lot of these people who are making these decisions, they're people who have experience and maybe baggage from the past. And the decisions or perspectives they have, they're not the same as the new generation. So I think it's really important to include youth. Um, because all the Francophone students I spoke to, they wanted more English in their lives. They, they were missing things that Bill 101 was restricting them from. Um, they wanted more inclusion, and I've been feeling that from the Anglophones as well. Like many of them are more bilingual now, 
there's a lot more intermarriages, so kids are coming out with perfectly bilingual, one parent, one parent, English, French. So I think it's important to look at that and actually know what our Anglo population looks like, because I think until we do that, we can't really move forward or make decisions. Um, okay, so for interactions with Francophones, so I think we're looking at what could Anglophone youth benefit from working with Francophones in Quebec and working with Francophones outside Quebec. So I think both are really important, but the future collaborations is for Francophones inside Quebec. So it speaks to what I just said. I think it's really important that we stop se or separating English and French students. I think they want to work together. They just, by the nature of the province, they're often separated. So we see it more at Sage Upper University. They have chances to work together but I think we need to keep encouraging that, like sports teams or extracurricular activities, try to make sure that we aren't like, at an institutional level separating English and French people as much as possible, because from what I understand, they actually want to be together, but sometimes they aren't given the opportunity to. And then the belonging and identity, I was thinking for the Francophone minority um, outside Quebec, I think it could be a really good opportunity to learn what they're doing and to make partnerships with them. And I know for the Anglophone minority, a lot of it's like uh, emotional or psychological issues as well, just feeling of belonging. Um, so I think just speaking with other minorities might help um, because I think it's sort of a unique situation so that if they had someone who's going through a similar thing, not identical, but as close as possible maybe, that they would gain something from that. And I would be very curious, like I feel like I'm very segregated from the other minorities in Canada, so it would be great to have actual organized efforts to meet with these people. Um, I don't know what form that would take, but maybe something like the forum, we could incorporate that somehow. Um, these, again, they're just some observations I made. Um, I wrote greater female presence and repre representation. I think the forum did a really good job, and as you could see, there were lots of women who were represented, but I think it's also something to talk about like even having a specific section talking about maybe the extra struggles that women might go through. So we already have a problem with just a general population that we're trying to look at, but even making it a smaller group of thinking the extra steps women have to take or um, just having more time with women speaking, I felt I would have liked that. Um, and then my second uh, suggestion maybe was to have more information about the Eastern Townships, which we just happened to be in the township, so I understand that it was for the whole of Quebec, but I think it's a really unique area. And if we did have a lot of Montrealers, which I think we saw we did, I think it would be nice to show that there is, like what it's like to be in the regions of Quebec as an Anglophone too. So I think maybe having some special sessions just on the townships might have been valuable, or just on the other regions in general that have Anglophones, because I don't know anything about Western Quebec Anglophones, or I don't know anything about um, Northern Quebec Anglophones, so. I would have appreciated a more like rest of Quebec section, so maybe for the future. And that just reminded me, now I wanted to speak about the Nunavik students as well, because that was such a powerful experience, and Denise mentioned it as well, but I think it was, it's hard to describe how heart-wrenching it was and how um, powerful it was to be there with those students. And I think they were a good example of students who have been excluded from the youth dialogue or like we have this English-French dichotomy that we keep speaking about, but I think they're excluded geographically a lot of the time and just they're not adequately represented. Like some of them speak French, some of them speak English, but of course they have all their own native languages as well. So I think we need to be careful just speaking of an English-French divide sometimes is that we exclude people like this or we exclude the diversity that we now have in Quebec. So. I know we are an officially uh, French province, or officially bilingual country as well, but I think these voices need to be represented to have a whole picture of youth, because it really does limit if you have a quarter that are identifying as visible minorities, and you have these students, I think we need to yeah, be careful to separate just into two categories, and that might actually limit what we can do. Um, so that's actually all I had to say. That went a little bit faster <laughs> than I was thinking. Um, but uh, if anyone had any questions or um, additional things to add to that. And again, overall, I can say it was just an incredible experience, and like Denise said, it's something I am going to tell my friends about. Um, 
and it's something I would do again, honestly, because I think it has been evolving every year. So what it looked like in 2017 is not what it's going to look like in 2019. So I think it's not something that you do once and you say, oh, I'm, I'm civically engaged and I'm, I'm good to go. So <laughs> it's a, yeah. Yeah, I think it's valuable. Like, and then people like Nicholas, who you're going to hear from, he's done this twice now. And maybe he can, and Chris too, I guess you've been around twice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. And I think that's really valuable too. It's not like a course you take and you, you're done with. I think it's always a work in progress. So, um, yes. So thank you, Miles, for the introduction. Can everybody hear me at the back of the room? So thank you for coming out on this rainy day. And so I'm here to talk to you about my reflections and my experience as a Bishop's Forum participant in 2017, and then as a coach in 2018. So first, this is what I intend to do over the next 30 minutes approximately. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my background. So my identity, which I think is core to the reason that I chose to participate in the Bishop's Forum. Uh, I'll talk to you a bit about my experiences as a participant. What were the things that stood out? Um, I'll talk to you about some ways that I think that we could encourage uh, my youth to uh, get involved with minority causes. I'll talk to you a bit about the benefits of interacting with other demographics. And uh, then after that, I'll share some reflections as a coach and talk a bit about the uh, presentation before the Parliamentary Commission, which I know that Chris will be speaking to as well. So first of all, I'm a uh, litigation lawyer. I went, uh, I, I'm born and raised in Montreal. And so I went to high school in English. And in high school, I took about 50% of my classes in French. I went to CJEP in English, but there I maintained my French competency. I made sure to take some courses in French. Uh, I went to law school at McGill, which was primarily in English, but I still uh, continued to take some courses in French. And I went to uh, an exchange at Sciences Po in Paris where I took 50% of my classes in English and 50% in French. So why am I sharing that? Well, because to me, uh, my identity is, is central to the idea of being a bilingual Quebecer. And that's partly why I decided to uh, participate in the forum. So in my generation, um, there's a troubling phenomenon, which is um, the Anglophone brain drain. So essentially, uh, I tried to find the statistics on um, how many Anglophones had left the province after graduating from university. I found a CTV report that said that two thirds of graduates of English speaking universities, so McGill, Concordia bishops, have left the province after graduating. And while I, notwithstanding the good point uh, of the members of the Townshippers Association, I find that very concerning. And anecdotally, um, I know that of my friends, many have decided to uh, pursue careers outside of Quebec. They've left to the Ontario and they've left to the United States and they've looked for opportunities elsewhere. And I find that troubling. And so, you know, there's a constant peer pressure when you grow up in Quebec as an Anglophone uh, to look elsewhere, to leave. And I think that that is something that affected me. After graduating from university, I decided I'd practice law in Ontario. And so I'll tell you a bit about why I decided to look to Ontario as, to po as opposed to staying in Quebec. So things I was concerned about. Je peux me débrouiller en français, but I was worried that my legal French was not up to par. So speaking with clients, uh, communicating on a day-to-day -day basis, I was concerned that that might not be good enough. Political instability. There's been events that have happened during my lifetime which have made me concerned about the future of my province. There have been events that have made me concerned about the status and protection of minorities. And as a minority in Quebec, I found that concerning. So I'm thinking of uh, the incident in Hérouville, the 
whole debate concerning uh, Bill 60, the Charter of Values, uh, the Reasonable Accommodations debate. So all of those events left me with serious concerns about uh, what it's like uh, to be a minority in Quebec and the place for minorities in Quebec. So the bottom line for me is that I love my city, but I have a complicated relationship with my province. So when I decided to uh, look into the Bishop's Forum, I was really enticed by this idea of rekindling my enthusiasm for living in Quebec. And that's what I, that was sort of the impetus for deciding to uh, participate in the forum in year one. And I'm happy to say that um, as a participant, it, it has totally changed uh, my perspective and has reinforced uh, my idea of, of making a future in this province. So now to talk about things that stood out. I'm gonna talk about them in detail, but the three things that stood out, the Bishop's Forum is a hands-on experience, the Bishop's Forum is an empowering experience, and the Bishop's Forum is an intellectually challenging experience. So how is it, empow it hands-on to begin with? So I think a, a challenge for conferences in general is how do you engage people? How do you make sure that not just the extremely extroverted people uh, have a chance to be heard? How do you engage people who are more introverted like I am? And so one of the ways that the Bishop's Forum has achieved this is the small teams that work together for the purpose of the Parliamentary Commission, which breaks the ice and gets people to sort of feel more socially comfortable. Another way that it's hands-on is the opportunity to meaningfully interact with guests. And so Denise touched on that earlier. She said that a lot of the speakers are asked to stay for lunch. And for me, some of the most special experiences I've had at the forum are speaking one-on-one -on -one with some of the celebrities that have come to speak to us, whether it's Jean Charest or Gabriel Nadeau Dubois. So having those personal conversations was really something that impacted me because I would not have felt comfortable in a big group uh, to speak to them in front of a big group. So another way that it's hands-on is that the participants are constantly asked to give feedback as the week goes on. The organizers are diligent in making sure that everybody's having a good time, that everybody is responding and, and giving feedback. So that, I think, is important. Another way that it's hands-on is in terms of providing practical guidance uh, to the participants in terms of opportunities that they can be engaged with. So I think that some of the speakers, actually many of the speakers, uh, present opportunities that you can actually get involved with and tell you how it is that you can do that. So what the next steps you have to take are. And I think that that's some, uh, something the forum should continue to promote. Um, so in terms of the Bishop's Forum being empowering, one of the ways that the forum is empowering is that you meet other participants who are motivated, who are inspired, who really want to remain in the province and to make a future there. And that truly impacted me. Another way that it's empowering is that you have the opportunity to discuss the issues that affect Anglophones or English speaking uh, Quebecers. So I think that's sharing some of the common grievances is important. Learning about the history, about the demographics of the English speaking population in Quebec is critical. So learning about some of the initiatives that have been advanced uh, to promote the rights of English speaking Quebecers. And I'm thinking of um, Eric Maldoff's presentation as well as Jack Jedwab's in terms of those historical and uh, political and demographic issues. It's empowering to hear from passionate speakers in respect of so social justice causes, in respect of uh, indigenous rights. So we had Romeo Saganash, we had Kenneth Deer of Mohawk Nation this year, um, and social change panels. So that was something that also uh, was truly empowering to hear. The constant refrain from the speakers, from the organizers, is that your opinion matters as a participant. 
as an English-speaking Quebecer, as a youth. So that is how it's empowering. How is it intellectually challenging? Well, the forum begins, as it did last year, as it did this year, with a philosophical presentation by D Dr. Jamie Crooks, who's a member of the philosophy department at Bishop's University. And what that does is it cements the idea that the Bishop's Forum is not just a typical conference, but it's one where you engage with difficult concepts, with big picture concepts, and you're really thinking about things uh, not just in a practical sort of uh, pragmatic way, but in a long-term kind of visionary way. Um, so that's important. Another way that I think the Bishop's Forum is intellectually challenging is that it promotes the free exchange of ideas. So we know that the English-speaking community of Quebec is not just a monolithic block, right? There's, and it's important uh, for that to be recognized and reflected in the program. We've had speakers across the political spectrum. We've had speakers from the political left, from the political right. We had a panel this year uh, where all four uh, Quebec political parties were represented. So I think that's important. Even if you don't agree with the views that are being promulgated by some of the speakers, it's important to hear from them. I'm thinking of Gabriel Nadeau Dubois, who spoke last year. I didn't personally agree with what he had to say, but he, I was delighted that he came to speak to us and share his views. So that's how it's um, intellectually challenging, because really at the end of the day, the Bishop's Forum is about promoting critical thinking. You're not just reacting. So that's important. Uh, another way that it's sort of a, a difficult and challenging experience is in terms of the commission presentation, which I'll get to uh, in a little bit. Uh, and I don't think this would be possible if it weren't such a supportive and respectful environment for people to feel like they have, uh, they're comfortable to voice their opinions and to make themselves heard. So the impact of the Bishop's Forum for me Personally, at this point, having experienced it as a participant, then as a co-coach, I'm more civically engaged, and I want to return to Quebec to make a future. So what is needed? What else is needed to make sure that young people get involved uh, on behalf of minority causes, right? So I think it's important to identify what the current situation is. You just have to go to the forum to realize that there's no shortage of enthusiasm. There's tons of youth who want to get involved. There's tons of youth who are passionate about various causes, whether it's social justice, whether it's indigenous rights, whether it's uh, mental health. You know. So there's no shortage of enthusiasm. There's also no shortage of opportunities. So if you want to find something, you can go online and there's a lot of different opportunities to get involved in some way. However, that's not always ideal. And I think there's increasing recognition that, that uh, all causes, especially minority causes, require representation and input from youth. So that's super important. But what are some of the challenges? And I think one of the challenges is how do you get in through the, do through the door? So how do you get started? And that's where the Bishop's Forum is really important uh, because it provides you with that personal connection, that human connection that you wouldn't get through the internet if you were just looking at ways to sort of get involved on behalf of organizations or political causes. Um, I think another way that the Bishop's Forum could continue to promote um, the, what I would say is finding opportunities for young people um, is in terms of helping people fr find jobs after, um, after they graduate, and also to offer kind of a more formalized recruitment process uh, for various opportunities. I also think there are, s there are significant benefits uh, of interacting with minority Francophones from outside Quebec and Francophone youth from within Quebec. I think that the sharing of experiences is critical, so finding common ground, uh, establishing, uh, building bridges, uh, making sure that there's harmony between different groups uh, is important. And I think that the experience of interacting with the people who are from the north of Quebec, with youth who had come down to 
participate in the forum this year was made a tremendous impact as both Jocelyn and Denise have, have spoken about. Um, and I think we now have a better issue, a uh, better understanding of the issues that are being faced, of the struggles, and of the solutions of what is needed to actually address those situations. Because sometimes uh, if there's not the dialogue, if there's not that human connection, there's a risk that even with good intentions, you'll be at cross purposes and not know what it is that actually is needed. So I think that one of the ways the Bishop's Forum could continue to develop, uh, recognizing the need for there to be a space for the English speaking community of Quebec, uh, for English speaking Quebecers, so not just Anglophones uh, from Montreal, but for the entire community. Um, I think that an area of potential for the forum is allowing youth from different demographics to interact, to share viewpoints, uh, to discuss approaches to various challenges, and to collaborate to find solutions. And I also think it's important uh, to engage with the Francophone majority within Quebec, especially uh, with Francophone youth. So now I'm gonna share some reflections as a coach at the Bishop's Forum. Um, so I chose to return as a coach, uh, primarily to give back, but also because I was too old to actually participate. I was no longer in the 18 to 24 uh, category. And one of, the, uh, one of the great aspects of being a coach is that when you're a participant, the focus is on the speakers, it's on what you're absorbing, everything's new, and you're hearing it for the first time. When you're a coach, the focus is almost exclusively on the participants. So it's very special, I find, to be uh, with a group of highly motivated people, uh, a diverse group that really ref reflects uh, the English-speaking uh, population of Quebec. So that's, that's really interesting to me. Um, another objective of coaches at the forum is to facilitate uh, the project that the groups are working on throughout the week, which is uh, a presentation before the Parliamentary Commission. And Chris will be expanding on that, but just to give you a brief uh, synopsis. So this year, we are the groups presented before David Birnbaum, Jeffrey Chambers, uh, Marlene uh, Floyd, and Royal Orr. And it's just a 10 minute brief presentation as Denise talked about. So my two groups, one worked on uh, sustainable development uh, and the other worked on immigration and diversity. And I think that the task is a, a really a difficult one, but it's a very worthwhile and valuable one. So my groups had to outline a proposal for change as well as an implementation strategy they, dis they discussed the pros and cons of their ideas, and they actually anticipated possible backlash, possible criticism of those ideas. And I think the presentation aspect is important for a variety of reasons. The first is encouraging youth to think critically, to address problems that exist in society that they're passionate about, and uh, to suggest solutions. So that's very important. But another aspect which I thought about during the week is that I think when you actually go about the process of suggesting solutions and then thinking about pros and cons of those solutions, you realize that being in power, being in government is difficult because it actually is, it's easy to come up with solutions and it's harder to implement them. So sometimes there's very good ideas that haven't been implemented for for various reasons, it's often because of cost. So I think sometimes when you're in a group that's coming up with ideas and looking at the realistic, at the logistics of implementing those solutions, you uh, develop a greater appreciation for what it's like to be in government. Um, another reason I think the presentation is important is because it ties together uh, some of the themes throughout the week whether it's uh, the theme of citizenship, um, engagement, community, social justice. You know, these are the big overarching themes. And so the presentation kind of uh, ties that together. I think that it gives everybody the opportunity to be heard 
So once again, that notion that not everybody's going to feel comfortable speaking in front of the group, not everybody uh, wants to, um, to participate in that sense, but when you're actually presenting before the commissioners, it's a smaller audience. Uh, in many ways, it's a less daunting audience, notwithstanding how distinguished uh, individuals uh, th you're presenting to. Um, another way that it's important is that it really reinforces teamwork and collaboration, which we know is critical for youth. Um, it, it's a platform for youth to express ideas, you know, so who are you expressing it to? You're expressing it to people in positions of power, which is really important. Um, so that's, that can be, I think, empowering for, for the youth that participate in this program. Uh, and it also provides kind of a, a structure, a general structure to the week at the forum, which I think is, is positive, at least for me. Um, and I, I would repeat that um, perhaps it's not uh, for everybody, but I, I read this uh, report that indicated that millennials actually, despite preferring to work independently, they prefer structure and objectives that uh, clearly define what must be achieved. So that may be surprising to some of you, but it's actually uh, what PWC came up with. Uh, so when you're presenting before the commissioners, um, you can expect a combination of positive feedback and constructive criticism. And um, of course, while the commissioners may not be experts in every single field, they are extremely knowledgeable. So my groups, I think, anticipated some of the uh, questions they might get asked, and they addressed those very well because they had gone through that process. So that's sort of a, 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 an overview of the, of the uh, presentation aspect that Chris will be getting into a little bit more. Um, and I think being a coach was truly inspiring to have all these bright minds from across the province. Um, and I think that, you know, one of the other inspiring parts is to see speakers who have achieved so much at a young age, whether it's um, Tiffany Callender of the Cote de Neige Black Community Association, who I thought was excellent, uh, Christian Arsenault, a counselor at the City of Montreal. I mean, these are young people who've achieved a lot. So I think having role models for the participants is really important that you can identify with and sort of look up to. Um, and perhaps fostering that mentorship and making sure that um, if you wanna get involved with some of those people that there's a way to do that, that could be a direction that the forum could possibly explore. Um, so I think to sort of sum this up because I'm probably nearing the end of my time. Okay, so I've got two takeaways. One of them is that the participants were super passionate. So I think that that was um, you know, a real, almost a mind-blowing experience for me to see how everybody involved was truly uh, motivated to make change and to live in, there are a lot of people that wanna make a future in Quebec. So that was a, a really inspiring part of it. Um, and I also appreciated the diversity of the English speaking population in the province more than I ever had. So I think that that was sort of what really marked my impression of being a participant and then a coach at the forum. So I'm happy to answer questions.
Well, I think my impression is that everything in Ontario kind of starts one year earlier because here we have CGEP. So people who are still sort of deciding what they want to do have those two, uh, that one extra year of sort of figuring things out. And in Ontario, they're, I think they're encouraging people to kind of get involved and to be uh, more autonomous in high school at a younger age. And I actually think that's the right approach. You know, notwithstanding the fact that um, CGEP is a great opportunity to still uh, speak to people, to get them involved in various causes, I think that, you know, starting younger is better. And I think that uh, you probably um, have encountered uh, youth in, in their teens who are passionate about, about these types of causes, who would uh, be interested and enthusiastic about getting involved. And if there's the enthusiasm, then why not, right? come back. Yeah, I, I think that there's a couple of things that happen um, in the Bishop's Forum as kind of a formative um, experience and a transformational experience in many ways. One of the things is that you're hearing so much about Quebec and you're hearing about um, the role of, of English-speaking uh, Quebecers and the place of English-speaking Quebecers in society. And I think just having that reinforced that there is a place for English-speaking Quebecers is critical. Because sometimes uh, English-speaking Quebecers don't feel that there actually is a place for them. So I think just hearing that kind of is, is comforting and that's, it's great to know that, that there are opportunities for, for people. Um, and I think another turning point for me um, was really to see um, what the kind of uh, future of Quebec is sort of based on the participants that actually uh, attended the forum because it's such a bright future if, if these are the types of people who are um, getting involved and who are, uh, who are gonna be the future leaders of our society. So to me, that was really inspiring. So uh, yeah, thanks all. Thank you all very much for uh, for joining us today for the kind introduction and for the other speakers as well. I was furiously taking notes uh, on your uh, contributions as well because there's some of the things I'm going to be touching on. A few things I may want to build on and elaborate. And it's uh, I really appreciate being back in this space where we're reflecting on the Bishops Forum while at the same time we're doing a bit of uh, publicizing of just what it is and what it does because one of the things that I really appreciate about it is that it is an evolving process and that, it ha and that there's a third forum plan for next summer and so that we can integrate uh, elements that work really well, maybe tweak a few things, because I think overall it's an extraordinary experience. Uh, to pick up on what Nick was saying about uh, working as a coach, and I, I've been a coach for the last two years with the Bishops Forum, uh, working with a small group of students who really, really want to be there, who are passionate and engaged in what they're doing. Um, my day job is as a SAGEP teacher. I teach political science at Dawson College. Unfortunately, not all of my classes are 100% like this all the time, whereas, <laughs> whereas the, the week of the forum is. And when I was speaking with a colleague who was considering, um, considering being a coach this year, it's basically what I told her. I said, look, this is a week where you're with highly motivated students, highly engaged. It's also the week before SEJEP, so as a teacher, it's a good time to kind of get your head back in the, in the game for when classes start the, the following week. Um, so just in terms of myself and my background, I do teach professionally at Dawson College in the Department of Political Science, and I was asked to be on the advisory board initially by Richard Filion, our Director General. Uh, I think uh, primarily because of my experience in other kinds of student engagement and leadership activities. Uh, I worked uh, organizing a conference in partnership with the Institut du Nouveau Monde in Dawson College. Uh, and I'm also very pleased to hear the mention of Model United Nations uh, as a kind of different event, and that's sort of my main professional uh, obligation outside of the classroom where I coordinate Dawson College's Model UN, we uh, run a couple of conferences, and a lot of my thoughts about the forum are actually framed vis-a-vis -vis Model UN. Because while I find it attracts a similar uh, type of mo sort of motivated, engaged student, um, the, the actual learning that happens inside I think is quite different because Model UN, which is a wonderful uh, extracurricular activity, is about simulating and taking on a role that is not you. Whereas I think the great strength of the Bishops Forum is you're actually 
you're, you're not playing a role. You're you. You're figuring out what problems you want to engage with and how to fix them. Uh, with maybe the one, with maybe the one aspect of this mock parliamentary forum, and that's with some of my recommendations a bit later. I'm going to actually maybe ask that we consider maybe tweaking that to making it even more real. But we'll, we'll come back to that. And, and just finally, on the sort of uh, brain drain economic migration issue, I grew up in New Brunswick, and so I left there, uh, moving to Montreal in search of opportunities um, as an Anglophone, but with a, a good enough base in French. Uh, but also my participation in the forum over the past couple of years has really got me thinking about my own place as an English-speaking Quebecer, recognizing that both of my parents were English-speaking Quebecers, who eventually left, again, to New Brunswick of all places, but that it ha is uh, <laughs> it is just learning, learning about, the, for, for economic reasons, um, but also just lear but learning about uh, the, the place of this community, and I've, I've learned a great deal, which is always a, a wonderful thing. So I do want to uh, talk about a couple of axes within the, within the forum primarily about the identity of the participants and who is participating, uh, and then a little bit more about the structure uh, leading up towards the, the discussion of the parliamentary, uh, parliamentary um, sessions. Uh, I do, uh, and uh, thanks again for bringing up uh, Dr. Jamie Crix's talk that was at the start, and I think this is a, not something you have at many events like this, which is a reasonably in-depth philosophical framing of the week. And since that is, after an initial dinner, the first session that we have, it sticks in people's minds. And uh, Dr. Crooks gave a wonderful presentation this time on the idea of integration, but the, uh, ultimately the idea of what does it mean to be a host? How, what does it mean to host people in your society? And how does one be a good host? And I mean, he brought in a lot of uh, you know, good philosophical grounding for it, but as a number of the questions throughout the week continued about questions about integration, questions about refugees and, uh, and questions like this, this notion of, okay, what are we, are we being hosted? Are we hosting? What does it mean to be a good guest? And I, I, I really appreciate the philosophical um, underpinnings of then the much more pragmatic and practical sessions that come a little bit later. Uh, so first, turning to the, uh, the participants, uh, because one of the role uh, as being on the advisory board, part of our role was to recruit students. And I'm thinking in particular for the first session, uh, which is always a challenge when it's something new. Uh, the second session had all the wonderful advantages of a whole cohort of students who had already been through it, and that word of mouth, peer-to-peer -peer recruitment, uh, you can't beat it. You know, as a teacher, I can tell my students what to do. Sometimes they do it. Uh, but it, it's much more powerful coming from peers. Uh, and so that proved the second time uh, a great deal, uh, a, great, uh, a great advantage. Um, also, the second, uh, in the second session, there was, I noticed, more recruitment from outside of traditional educational institutions. I, I'd have to look at, the, uh, look at the numbers. But what I thought was very valuable about this from community organizations, uh, also our three participants from the North, which was again an extraordinary experience, um, was added a lot because I think it started to bring in participants who wouldn't normally go to these sorts of things. So when, I, you know, when the first year, oh, we need to recruit students, and uh, as was mentioned, one of the main ways we got students was, yeah, we put up posters, we sent out emails, we did all that, but it was direct word of mouth and recommendations from faculty, from teachers, from, uh, from deans of students and others. And who are the students that we're gonna know of and talk to and recommend? Well, they're students that got the highest grade in my class or they're actively involved with their student council. So this is sort of the starting point. And while it's a great advantage to these students, uh, and I see this with my Model UN students as well, I also see when a student maybe ha has not already been in that position, and that events like this as a first experience, even learning to you know, wear business casual clothes and speak in front of a microphone, those kinds of skills that some of us take for granted, not everybody has, and so this, these types of events can provide a real, real great learning opportunity to kind of bring people up into being able to participate actively in, uh, in civic life. So I was really pleased to see the uh, advancement in terms of the second, and I think it's something that we need to uh, take seriously as we move forward. The second uh, aspect of the, uh, of the participants was, I think, this, this really interesting question about identity as English-speaking Quebecers, young English-speaking Quebecers, which I think we noticed in the very first edition was a contested term, that it wasn't, that it wasn't necessarily one single identity. And what I found, re and, uh, what I found really interesting was that there's so many, there's such a plurality of identities being represented. And many of the students, I mean, this is not based on, on hard data, but just based on my anecdotal uh, experiences of speaking with the students and the other organizers, uh, many were um, starting to understand that they were part of a community, but that they hadn't thought of themselves that way before. Uh, what was so interesting was seeing some of the historical 
accounts throughout the, the weeks of the English-speaking community in Quebec, the constitutional fights, you know, the evolution of Bill 101, the sign laws and all of that, which is a context that our forumers were generally not growing up in. And so we're not maybe politicized as a community in that same way. And so it led them to think of their identity as something new, uh, which, is, which is, I think, a really interesting experience for them, but also for us as we organize events about how best to uh, mobilize these engaged young people. Um, so I think this, yeah, I think this is an, uh, an interesting aspect of, uh, and at the same time, some, uh, some of these students may not have had, you know, in, so, in some ways some of the great work about mobilizing the English community has been protection of essential services, you know, healthcare, education. Um, and they're all, but many of them are at an age where education was kind of already taken care of. Uh, and fortunately for them, most of them have not had a huge amount of experience with the healthcare system because of their age. Um, and I was struck, though, by, it was actually Alain Dupuis in the first session talking about the defense of French language institutions in Ontario when he said, on veut être malade dans sa langue. And I think that, I mean, it stuck with me, and I think it stuck with a number of our formers as well, of the necessity of building a uh, strong, uh, strong community. So things, uh, I, th I think, things to think about along these lines. Uh, there are also two experiences in the second edition of the forum on this question of who do we mean, what do we mean by young English-speaking Quebecers that uh, I, I think are serious, worthy of consideration. Uh, the first that has been mentioned uh, several times as well is the inclusion of three young Inuit from the north uh, who were, I mean, English was not first language, and we're talking about Inuktitut as, or, uh, as, as first language, but are facing, frankly, quite different issues than the, uh, those of us in the south are facing, but, but nonetheless, you know, so important. And there was, uh, you know, the, the aftermath of their participation in the forum, the mobilization, the, uh, the advocacy that they have been involved in and other members of the forum that I've seen carry forward even after the forum, I think is, is unique and incredibly important. Um, speaking with, with Maggie McConnell, who was the, was the coach that had uh, sort of uh, accompanied them and was saying that, you know, we, we did see, there, you know, there was definitely some culture shock. And, you know, of living in a, you know, a new environment, and she said something that struck with me about these, these, uh, these formers that, you know, maybe in, were sort of <laughs> finding their feet in southern Quebec in a very different environment. She said, imagine you get off a plane, the northern tip of Quebec, and you need to find dinner. Where are you going to go? Do you go to the McDonald's? There's no McDonald's. You know, where are you going to go? How are you going to navigate it? And so within our own province, the vastly different lived realities, and there were so many experiences where we heard from them in a very concrete way, about what this was like. Um, it takes a lot of resources. It takes, you know, to, I mean, just, just uh, the cost of flights alone, you know, is what, like four grand, return flight from up north. Um, but money needs to be found to further uh, engage with these types of events. It's, uh, it's absolutely essential, because nobody left that, uh, left that conference unchanged. Uh, another aspect of the young English-speaking Quebecers uh, that I found really interesting was in the group of students that I was working with, there was one who uh, identified, she said, yeah, I'm a, you know, she came with a very strong Francophone accent. Yeah, I'm a, you know, I'm a pure, uh, pure blend Francophone from saint julie And I said, oh, great, so you're here. She's like, yeah, I'm an, I'm an English-speaking Quebecer. I speak English. And she was studying at Cégep in English uh, in, a, in a professional program. And she blew me, you know, just, you know, her, her, and her participation was, was on point. She had a really good sense of the politics of things and just her ability to advocate. Interestingly, she was uh, working on a technical program. And that's another aspect that I think is important as we recruit within uh, schools is not only to focus on the, you know, the poli sci, the, the uh, sort of social science, but to make sure that all aspects of Quebec education are represented. But yeah, I think her, but, and she wasn't the only one who would be more Francophone than Anglophone who was there. And, you know, a couple of times the sort of English-speaking consensus, she would have a way of sort of gently puncturing it with another point of view that maybe hadn't been considered, which I found uh, incredibly valuable. So again, these, I have a couple of other thoughts and recommendations maybe on more structurally about how that might move forward, but I think that uh, facilitating this kind of dialogue is a really important part of what we're doing. Um, so moving on from the participants, I want to turn now to the, the kind of structure of the week, which has been really well covered uh, in terms of the content, uh, and in terms of this idea of uh, what are the forumers actually doing, attending talks, participating in roundtables, uh, working in their groups, leading towards these mock parliamentary uh, simulations. Uh, bearing in mind all the time of what the learning objectives of this event are for the students, the stu sorry, formers, not all of them are students, but you know, this is, we're, we're used to thinking of them as 
people that are always in school, but one of the strengths of this is it's not just people in school. It's people also out, people working in their communities. Um, and thinking about how best we can leverage this incredible event to support professional development of the students, uh, both in the skills that they hone and develop throughout the week, but also in terms of the networks that they develop, both with each other, but also with a more senior generation. Um, so this, is, this has been sort of foremost on my mind. Sort of thinking about the kind of the pedagogy of the week uh, is strongly on my mind, and I know Heather's had a lot of uh, thoughts on this sort of thing too, and looking forward to, to hearing other ideas as well. Because um, much of the week is structured around panels and speakers, kind of in a traditional format, kind of like this one, uh, where there'll be a speaker, and then a Q&A after, or a panel, and then some discussion of Q&A after, sometimes more moderated, sometimes less, uh, occasional breakout sessions to work with uh, one's one small group under the uh, guidance of coaches, uh, and then other, other forms of activities. Um, in both years, it's a challenge. The scheduling, frankly, is a challenge, because we have this, you know, you saw some of the incredible lines ups of speakers. Okay, Jean Charest can be there, and he can be there at this time. Okay, you schedule the event for that time, because Jean Charest can be there. He's there both times, and that's, that was an amazing talk, and the experience was, was great. But what can unfortunately emerge is we get caught up, perhaps, in the amazing participants, um, accommodate those schedules, but don't necessarily structure, honestly, uh, sufficient uh, framing time for the, the mini group sessions, if I, if I can put it that way. Um, and it's a, it's a function of scheduling, and I get it, I've, I've organized these types of events, but finding ways of having the participants uh, be with their groups before the sessions, uh, more to then better prepare them as they participate in the session. Uh, and at the same time, this, the sessions themselves, overall, and there's a, there's, a number of, there's a number of variants on this, but would often be, okay, a presentation followed by a Q&A. And you can see at the Q&A, the lineups at the mics, you know, you don't always see that, but you know, everybody wanted, had something to say, Everybody wanted to participate. So one of the, th I, and I'm still, I don't have concrete recommendations yet, but how can we get the, these, these heavyweight speakers of, of all ages um, interacting more directly with the participants? Because they all want to talk to each other. But I think we're, we're, we're used to organizing conferences in certain ways. And I think with this, we can, we can sort of try to rethink that. Uh, in the first, uh, first edition of the forum, we had a great afternoon where four of the speakers uh, it, was in, it was in the tent, where basically we're separated in tables, and each speaker would work with, who would maybe give a presentation, I remember I was with uh, Eric Maldoff's group, would sit with about uh, 10 people, and would then work uh, with them on a particular issue, and then we'd get up and share. But also to have sort of one-on-one -on -one time with them, building in that concrete experience. Um, so I think that's an, uh, a very important aspect, in terms of uh, kind of finding ways to really um, leverage the time that they've got there. Because th these students, some of them have concrete projects they want to work on. Others may not know that yet, but are learning about the sorts of things that they, uh, that they, uh, that they want to work on. And this is in a way where I'm thinking about the, the sort of end product of the week, which is, the, which is the, the mock parliamentary simulations, which I think are great. And I really liked the, um, the enumeration of their qualities that was, that was put forward, because they do force uh, participants to think concretely, politically, how are you going to advance something? But in some ways, thinking back on the Model UN experience, that's the one thing that, okay, now pretend you're doing this. What I think would be interesting to think about is, uh, and maybe simil similar formats, similar people, but almost having students identify concrete projects they want to work on, either in advance or that evolve throughout the week, but finding a way of supporting them as they make a commitment to carry it forward. And the great thing is this is already happening spontaneously. I mean, I think of, of uh, Malcolm's uh, project with uh, Youth for Youth Quebec. I know it wasn't started at the Bishop's Forum, but I, I know it kind of, you know, there was definitely a bit of a boost there. So something that was there before, used the Bishop's Forum to develop and continues. I'm also looking at some of the advocacy that's happening around uh, the Inuit people in Quebec that's happened as a result of the networks that were made during this conference. Everybody became friends with each other on Facebook. You know, people are, I could see people linking up on Facebook, advancing causes, sharing videos, um, putting young uh, Northerners in touch with ministers and other political figures. I'm seeing this happening in real time on Facebook, and I thought, wow, what if the forum could actually gently make those platforms uh, carry forward? So I think, I mean, there's a number of different ways I think this could be accomplished, but this idea of keeping it, you know, the competitive advantage, I think you could say, of the Bishop's Forum is its integration with the real world. 
students, young people that want to change things, want to establish themselves in Quebec. Incredible resources in terms of participants who have experience, who have ideas, uh, policymakers, decision makers. How can we use those networks for the youth to feel that they are part of uh, the power structure in Quebec and that they can affect change? Um, yeah, no, so I have, uh, I, I've been informed I don't have much more time, so I do think just sort of moving on that, as it moves forward, I think within itself, finding ways of integrating more with these events. Also, as it moves forward, because we're entering into the third year, and this idea of, of maybe starting to work with other groups is, I think, something worth exploring. Uh, what's unique about the Bishops Forum is, to my knowledge, it's the one that's focused on English, uh, you know, English-speaking youth uh, across, the pro uh, across the province. I believe this is the only one. But there are a number of other similar initiatives, not identical, but with similar qualities that happen more primarily within the Francophone community um, that might, uh, that, you know, I've also I've done some work with in the past. And sometimes, you know, yes, it's technically bilingual, but it, become, it sort of becomes passively Francophone, and then the whole thing becomes Francophone. And while there are some English-speaking uh, participants, they end up being wrapped off and perhaps not able to express, uh, to express themselves uh, so much. What I think would be interesting as we explore those is to compare the issue areas that our youth have found as in uh, interesting with the types of issues that are being explored in these other conferences. They're very similar from my view, from what I've seen so far. My goodness, I have so much more to say. As a coach, I will just wrap up to say that the, the, the coaching is, is, is an amazing experience. You, don't, you, you wanna get out of the student's way because they're just, they're just running at it. I almost feel like I could be doing more during the week, but at the same time, I'm there, I'm hearing all these great speakers, appreciating it, and then just sort of gently guiding, the, uh, gently guiding folks through the week. So it's, uh, it's really a wonderful experience. I've, this has been a, a great couple of years, and I'm looking forward to seeing where the Bishop's Forum is going. Thank you very much. Hi. Uh, thank you, Denise and Chris and Nick and Jocelyn for those really important insights into the forum. It's fun to really relive um, those one or two weeks that we spent together. Um, I'll just give you my background. Uh, when I grew up in Ontario, I did my PhD at Concordia. Um, and I said to my partner at the time, boy, I kind of like Montreal. Do you think you might like to come to Montreal? And he said, over my dead body, I'll move to Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and now uh, we've been at, um, in the townships, and uh, he works in the townships, and I've been at Bishops for six years. And his comment on my tenure application is, you better get it, because we're not leaving. So um, I guess there's a lot of different, different paths to Quebec. Uh, so I work in the field of youth engagement. I've been working with the Center of Excellence for Youth Engagement, which is under the umbrella of the Students' Commission of Canada, which partners with young people to help them create the kinds of changes in our society that they want to see. Our staff is 60% 60, 60 of our staff is under the age of 24. So we are truly youth-led, youth-partnered. Um, and so when I heard about this incredible initiative, um, that had been created, I wasn't so much invited to participate as I strongly requested um, that I get to be a part of it. And I'm, I'm very, very fortunate um, that the organizers invited me in um, and allowed me to bring some of the knowledge that I've acquired through empirical and research means of what is best practice in terms of youth engagement. So I'm gonna start with sort of the two things that I wish everyone knew about youth engagement, and which sort of guided my recommendations, and then move on to some of the work that we did doing a more systematic evaluation of how the forum went. Um, so in 2002, Eccles and Gutman did a very um, thorough systematic review of what are the best features of youth programming and they came up with eight features. We evaluated the six that are in bold. I could spend an hour on each of them, but I won't, don't worry. Um, I think they're pretty self-explanatory, so I won't read off each one. Um, but I think um, from the discussion that's been happening, I just wanna make a point about supported autonomy. From a psychological point of view, I don't, I don't understand the Quebec societal issues the way that I know some of the really important people in the room understand it. Um, but supported autonomy has to do with 
um, a comment that was right on the money. Young people don't want to come to events to support adults' agendas. Young people want to come to events to advance their own agendas. Um, and so what the theory of change underlying the Bishop's Forum was, was if you have the right information about Quebec society from the people who helped create the Quebec society that you live in, that will support your ability to make a good decision as to whether or not Quebec is where you want to make your home or not. So not really a trying to convince them to stay in Quebec, but more of a giving them the information and ideas and materials and history that will allow them to make their own decision. With the idea that perhaps some of them, had they had that information, might actually choose to stay. The other really important issue of youth engagement that I'm um, excited about is the idea of psychological engagement. So it was around 2000 that Reed Larson wrote a key paper on positive youth development that showed that youth engaging at, in activities outside of the self, particularly out of school settings, is one of the key predictors to successful transition to adulthood. Um, and that age group that, I think it was you, Silvio, you were talking about, you said the in-between age. I'll just tell you, we use the term emerging adults to talk about those, um, that group, and I find that a really useful term for that 18 to 24 age group. When this research started, everybody was asking, well, what kinds of activities should my young people do, and how often should they be in an activities, and what if I overload them, and how many different activities should they do? Um, and what we're realizing now is that those aren't great questions to be asking. What we really need to be asking is to what extent are these young people engaged in this activity, whatever it is. So how much are they focusing on it? How much are they so excited about it they lose track of time? How much input do they have into it? How much enjoyment do they have? And so when they have that high level of psychological engagement, regardless of the activity, that's when you see the real benefits of that activity, the real um, increases in successful development. So there's my youth engagement talk in under two minutes. Cool. You're welcome. I know, know you guys know when you're really passionate about something how hard it is to stay down to two minutes. Um, so what kinds of questions were we able to evaluate? Really incredible opportunity for a, a researcher to not just ask questions but also to be part of the event and to have that ability to put meaning to the kinds of numbers and ideas that we were bringing forward. And we did a pre-test and a post-test, so we evaluated them before they came to the event and after the event. I forgot to say we did this in the very first forum. This is from the 2017 forum. So we were told that one of the objectives of this forum is to learn about how does Quebec work. So we thought we should figure out whether or not young people actually learned how Quebec works, whether or not the objectives were met and whether or not there was an increase in engagement in Quebec society that might translate into um, an encouragement to stay. From a youth engagement point of view, um, we wondered whether or not we had succeeded in providing those eight positive features of youth engagement from the young people's perspective as a an event that would increase their psychological engagement in the issues. So a lot of the measures that we used came out of the work that's been done through the Students Commission of Canada. The Students Commission of Canada has uh, an evaluation, it's much more than an evaluation, but uh, a platform called Sharing the Stories. If you just Google Sharing the Stories, you will find it. Um, they work with or youth serving organizations across Canada. I think we're beyond 200 youth serving organizations across Canada. Um, and we provide relationship building and evaluation services. What this does is allows us to compare what happened at the Bishops Forum to really a national aggregate of what's happening in youth engagement events across Canada. Um, so some of the surveys that we borrowed from their platform, by the way, these tools are freely available. So if you're also interested 
in measuring youth engagement, please feel free to check out the Sharing the Stories platform. Their tools, the research base behind them are all freely available. Um, the positive settings of the features that we talked about, the youth experience survey, which is probably one of the standard um, engagement surveys. There's like 200 questions. So we just took a few of them, identity, initiative, skills, and teamwork. Wanted to know whether or not leadership and policy and sense of able to ability to control policy or have some say in how policy is shaped, whether or not that changed. Uh, we used a faith in society questionnaire, but we adapted it to Quebec specifically. And then psychological engagement, focus, enjoyment, so on and so forth. Because of the linguistic aspects of the forum, we also wanted to look at their competence in both English and French and the extent to which they identified with English and French communities. So unfortunately, uh, we didn't get as many formers participating in the evaluation as we had hoped. Um, but of the formers who participated, and I can tell you sometimes from my um, experience with all of them, where this is maybe not as representative of the entire forum and where it is, um, the people who participated had a really strong record of achievement and of community engagement. Um, so 55% of our participants identified as white, that our sample who participated is maybe overrepresented by ethnic minorities. I don't think that's exactly how it came out in the forum. Um, about 80% of our forumers reported that they had grades of 80% or higher. That's really quite remarkable. So we had some really high achieving young people. Um, and about half of them had experiences with other youth conferences. Again, that's a pretty remarkable number. You don't usually see that much engagement um, in a youth conference. Our formers actually expressed, and I think this has already been mentioned um, through anecdotal observations. It's nice when these two things match up. Um, they really identified equally with English and French speaking communities. And in fact, one of the first things that they wrote on our poster, and, our, it's, and maybe one of my favorite, I, you had it too, right? Um, is no more barriers between English and French Quebec. So they really wanted um, to talk about multiple identities and integrating, and much like the youth we see across Canada, they didn't like being put in a box and they didn't like being labeled. They, they really wanted to focus on um, an inclusive message. How did they feel about the conference? So this is the scale from one to five, and these are the six features of positive settings that we measured. Um, so you can, or no, sorry, I messed up my slides. Sorry, these are the different events that we held. Um, so you can see they liked all of the events very much. They felt very positively about it. The coaches did pretty well. Yes. Um, and it is a, a wonderful experience as a coach. I'm actually still in touch with the um, young people who I got to coach over two years. I was just Skyping with one of them um, the other night. Here are the, sorry, I get so excited about youth engagement. I forget all other things. Um, here are the, the six features, positive features that we measured as part of the conference. Um, typically youth conferences, you see really high, we would call ceiling effects, really high numbers. It's typically around 4.8 out of five. So you can see the forum did about as well as other um, youth conferences in terms of skill building, empowerment, belonging, supportive relationships, um, the use of youth voice and safety. Did anything change about their language identity? Um, no, from pre to post, there wasn't any change in terms of how much they identified with their English speaking community. A little bit of an increase actually in their identification as French speaking. Um, not totally significant, but with a few more people, it might have gotten there. Um, but what's really exciting for me uh, 
is that what we found at the forum really matches what we found over and over and over again across Canada, that for the young people who were more engaged in the conference, who experienced a lot more focus and a lot more enjoyment, who lost track of time while they were at the conference, um, they experienced an increase in their English speaking community. So the more engaged they were, the bigger of an increase into um, their or identification with that linguistic identity we saw. Um, so that's just a correlation, but it gives some credence to the fact that we really need to think about engagement as a priority when we're talking about youth. Um, I was surprised to see that their leadership qualities increased after the forum, not because I didn't think the forum was an excellent <laughs> program, but because they had such high leadership qualities to begin with. Um, but actually Jocelyn said really nicely, one of our phenomenal young leaders at Bishop saying that after a week there, she really felt that she had something to give and she was ready to give it. So it did um, uncover in young people this realization that they already had the kinds of leadership capacities that we need to see in our society. And I think maybe give them the courage to step forward and start using them. Did anything change about their decision to stay in Quebec? Never in the, in the week that we were there did we ever say that we wanted them to stay or that the point was to try to talk them into staying. Um, but there certainly was, uh, uh, here is what Quebec is about, do you think you might like to participate in it um, theme throughout the week. So about 39%, which works out to about nine people, said that they would change their mind and actually there were a number of comments about not just changing their mind about running, uh, staying in Quebec, but changing their mind about getting involved in politics. Um, A number of them, about eight of them, were going to stay anyway, so it didn't really, nothing changed. Hopefully they felt better about their decision, but we didn't ask that. Um, and about five to six of them said, no, thank you for the week, but this really has nothing to do with my decision whether or not to stay or not. Um, here are questions that we asked about faith in society. Uh, their faith in Quebec society went down after the week. This is, <laughs> this is actually quite typical in youth engagement conferences. Um, so for example, we've often had interventions where we try to get young people more involved in the community and they report at the beginning, yeah, I'm pretty involved in the community. And then when they see what the community is really about, they're like, oh, actually, I'm not that, I'm not as involved as I thought I was. <laughs> um, so I'm not worried about this. I think this actually reflects that we changed the baseline of what Quebec society was for young people. And this shows that they have maybe a better understanding of the realities of what's going on and what we need to do to better our society. So uh, what did we do with this 2017 feedback that we integrated into the next year? Um, we did put a focus on increasing the diversity of attendees and of speakers. We put more priority on that. Um, we added more icebreakers into the event and we created more networking opportunities. We also offered, because coaching was such a success, we thought, if that many coaches is good, double the number of coaches must be even better. Um, so we added the support of co-coaches of people who had experienced the forum before and could give us that experience of being a forumer. Um, and I think as Chris said, uh, we allowed the forumers to really take the lead in social media. Young people, it's a generalization, but they're just better at social media than us and we should just accept that and let them and let them do it. Um, so they really took the lead in terms of how to create a social media presence um, for us and how to create a networking presence among us. One of the first intensive youth engagement um, conferences that has both pre and post findings. So although we don't have the numbers we would have liked, 
uh, we don't know much about what these kinds of events do for young people. So it was really an exciting opportunity for my colleagues and I to really investigate an event like this from an empirical point of view. Um, the low participation rate was unfortunate. The recommendation that I would put forward for that is that evaluation needs to be part and parcel of a program. So it needs to be something that they all do together. Um, and on my end, once again, as a researcher, my eyes were bigger than my stomach. I needed to be a little more choosy about the amount of questions that I ask because I really do get too excited um, to ask questions and the, the questionnaire package gets a little bit big. So I think um, balancing those two issues might um, in the future help with these kinds of issues. So what did I learn? Um, talented, engaged young people are really interested in experiences like the forum. There is a market for that kind of youth experience. Um, young people express an integrated identity of English and French communities, and they don't like those boxes and labels quite as much as other people did. Um, but they do really appreciate learning about the history and the roots of those ideas. Um, the integration of recommendations of best practices from empirical findings, I think can really support the, whatever the goal is you have of a youth event. So they're really worth considering whatever it is that you're looking to do. Um, and overall, it's been a very successful endeavor in terms of integrating young people in the workings of Quebec society. So as a researcher of Youth Voice, I'm going to let um, the young people have the last word in this. Again, one of my favorite um, pieces of writing that kind of popped up across the forum. It was really interesting to see the way that young people used their voice, not just when they were up at the microphone, but around the walls to sort of express their ideas. Thank you very much. Clear. Um, I will say to everyone, governments, uh, the different uh, civil servants, the different organizations, the institutions of the community that have made this work, obviously a lot of people work really hard and, and many of them on a volunteer basis, but it's really a community effort and we're prepared to continue if the community feels that there's value in our continuing to do it. I wanted, if I may, uh, Miles, just to, to end by answering Michael's question, um, which was uh, around, shouldn't we be encouraging our young people to go out and be citizens of the world? And my short answer to that is absolutely. I mean, that's what we try and do at our university. I'm sure it's what everyone tries to do in each one of their institutions. It's what parents try and do for their children. We're all trying to help this next generation be equipped to be go out into the world and um, be successful wherever they choose to pursue their careers. I don't feel bad that one week out of uh, the year, we would spend a week um, focusing on the possibilities of, of, um, of staying and making a life in Quebec. Uh, as you've heard, we, didn't, we weren't proselytizing. We weren't making anybody feel guilty if this was not their choice. We weren't arguing that they should. We just went at this with the perspective that we wanted to equip young people to make uh, informed and competent choices. Um, so I, I think that's, uh, I think that's a, remains a really important objective. It's one that we're gonna continue to pursue certainly next year and as Marie -Jose, says, Jose said in theory, it's for five years, although we only have the funding for guaranteed for one more year. But um, my guess is that uh, over the years, we will look back and say that some of the people who participated in this forum went on to make a significant contribution to our society. And that's all that we can hope to achieve. So anyway, thank you all for spending the afternoon with us. Thank you.